What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with every weapon in Modern Warfare. In today's episode, we're going to be getting into the LMG category, uncovering the PKM. And right up front, I just wanted to address something. I've had this in the works for a little while, and I noticed Drifter uploaded his PKM in depth yesterday, so I checked it out. And I don't know where he's getting his damage numbers from, but I have triple checked and they just aren't accurate. So just in case you're wondering why my damage numbers are different than his, I think he made some mistakes. I have triple checked my numbers and they are absolutely accurate. So getting into damage, we get a base damage profile of 3128. However, the main damage profile we want to look at is our upper torso damage multiplier. Keep in mind, this doesn't apply to the stomach. This is upper torso only. And this damage is 3430. So this means as long as you're hitting those upper torso multipliers, this is going to be a three to four shot kill. As for headshots, our multiplier is 1.49, which means we have a headshot damage profile of 4642. And this means you actually can't get a two shot kill to the head, even at point blank ranges. And like I said, I have triple checked this and that does hold true. As for our rate of fire, this is pretty much average at 759 rounds per minute. And this means our statistical minimum time to kill, assuming upper torso shots, is going to be 158 milliseconds in the three shot kill range and 237 milliseconds in the four shot kill range. This is one of the best time to kill values in the entire game for full auto guns. But of course, keep in mind that only applies if you're hitting the upper torso multipliers. If you're shooting them in the limbs or the stomach, for instance, you won't get that very fast time to kill. It's also worth noting, since we are on the topic of rate of fire, there is a slight delay since this is an open bolt design. There's a very slight delay when you pull the trigger to when the gun actually goes off for the first time. And this is important to mention because that does technically slightly slow down your statistical minimum time to kill, assuming you're not already firing the gun. And this can also throw you off a little bit as far as landing that first shot quickly and accurately. As for our ranges, as you can see here, that three shot kill potential will extend out to 37 and a half meters, and then beyond that, it will be a four shot kill out to infinity. This range isn't ridiculously long by any means, but it is better than basically all of the assault rifles at least. As for suppressors, just like with all the guns, the lightweight suppressor will reduce your ranges by 25%, and the monolithic suppressor increases your range values by just seven and a half percent. As for hardcore, our one shot kill potential is 37 and a half meters. And keep in mind, you do not have to hit the upper chest multiplier in order to get a one shot kill in hardcore because your base damage is over 30 at that point. Moving on to hip fire, as you can see here, the PKM has pretty standard hip fire for the LMG category. It is beat out by the SA87, just like all the other LMGs are beat out by that. But just know your hip fire spread isn't that great with the PKM. It doesn't really excel in the hip firing department unless you've got a laser sight on there. When it comes to idle sway, as you can see here, there's definitely some movement when aiming down sight, but it's a very slow moving idle sway. So it's generally pretty easy to compensate for, and I would say this is not an issue by any means. When it comes to recoil, the PKM is very accurate because it's got pretty much just straight vertical recoil. It doesn't lean in any direction, and vertical recoil is very easy to predict and control, and therefore I would say this has excellent recoil properties. Getting into our handling, our aim down sight time is very slow, just like it is with all of the LMGs at 434 milliseconds. So this is one of the big downsides of using the PKM over like an assault rifle, for instance. As for our sprint out time, this is standard for the LMG category at 334 milliseconds, and our super sprint out time is 467 milliseconds, which is painfully slow. As for our magazine capacity, this is pretty amazing at 100 rounds with 100 in reserve. And our reload add time is extremely slow at 6.77 seconds. This takes like a lifetime in Call of Duty terms to reload. We can cut that down though using the sleight of hand weapon perk. When you're using this, it will cut your reload add time down to 4.61 seconds, which is still slow, but it's much faster than without it. But finally for our base stats, we've got our mobility and our movement speed is pretty standard for LMGs and quite slow at 88%. And our aim down sight stray speed is also pretty standard for LMGs, but slow at 35%. So now that we have all that covered, let's start getting into the unique attachments that the PKM has. And we're gonna start it off with the barrel attachments. First off, we have the 18.2 inch compact barrel. And with this, our aim down sight time is cut down by about 13% or three frames, which is very noticeable and our overall movement speed is increased by 1%. Now these benefits come at the cost of bullet velocity, which is going to make it a bit more difficult to hit, especially moving targets at longer ranges. And also we lose a little bit of recoil control, which if we have a look at that recoil control with this barrel on there, you can definitely see that the gun is kicking a little bit more than standard. Although I would still say this is a very easy to control and predict recoil pattern. 
and you probably won't have too many issues controlling that. As for our next barrel, this is the 26.9 inch extended barrel, and with this one we get an increase to our damage range, and this is a 20% increase, which is pretty decent. Also, we get an increase to our bullet velocity, so it'll make it easier to hit targets at longer ranges, especially when they're moving. And this one also helps with our recoil control, which if we have a look at that recoil pattern, as you can see here, it is definitely a noticeable improvement to your recoil control. But like I've been saying the whole time, the base recoil is just fine, so I don't know if this is really necessary, but just know it definitely does help a bit. Now these benefits do come at the cost of your aim down sight speed. This is going to be just one frame slower, so about 4% slower, which is barely even noticeable. And our movement speed is also slowed down by about 1%, which again, not a super noticeable reduction. So finally for barrels, we have the 25.9 inch heavy barrel. And with this one, we get a little bit more of a damage range increase at 25% rather than the 20% with the 26 inch barrel. And on top of that, we do get the increase to our bullet velocity, which definitely helps in some situations. As for the cons, once again, our aim down sight speed is just slowed down by one frame or 4%, which is barely noticeable. And that's going to wrap it up for the barrel attachments on the PKM, but we've also got some magazines that I wanted to have a look at, and the first one is the 150 round belt magazine, and with this one obviously gives you 150 rounds, but that does come at the cost of aim down sight speed, it says, but at 60 FPS at least, there is no measurable change to your aim down sight speed, so you don't have to worry about that, and your movement speed is slowed down by about 3%, which is fairly noticeable. As for the next one, the big boy, we've got the 200 round belt magazine. And with this one, you do actually get a reduction to your aim down sight speed by about 2 frames, or roughly 8% reduction, and this is pretty noticeable. And then our movement speed is also slowed down by roughly 6%, which is very, very noticeable. So, personally, I think the 200 round magazine has too many downsides for just 50 extra rounds. I would much rather go with the 150 round magazine in most situations. And with that, that's finally going to cover it for all of the important stats on the PKM. But now I just wanted to get into some great attachment combos as well as example class setups that you could use. And first up we have my preferred way of running the PKM. This is all about taking away the downsides of it being an LMG, so like mobility and aim down sight time. So with this we're using the 18.2 inch compact barrel, we've got the 1 milliwatt laser, the no stock attachment so we can really speed up our movement speed and aim down sight speed. We've also got stippled grip, which again helps with your aim down sight speed, also helps a little bit with your sprint out time. And then we've got that 150 round belt magazine, just because I don't like reloading this thing often, and that does help a decent amount. So like I said, this is my preferred way to run this, simply because this suits my playstyle. I don't like being the guy that just hangs back and sits in one spot pre-aiming. I do like moving around a decent amount, and therefore I really do feel I have to make up for a lot of the downsides of the PKM being an LMG. And this is just a great way to run it, in my opinion. As for an example class setup to go along with that particular attachment combo, we've got a Desert Eagle for our secondary, the EOD perk to deal with explosives, Kill Chain, as well as Battle Harden. Our lethal is going to be a C4, and our tactical is a Stim Shot. This is really designed around aggressive play and getting those streaks up quickly and effectively. Getting into our next attachment combo, this one's designed a lot more for the longer range, picking people off and kind of sniping people, more of a traditional LMG playstyle. And with this one, we're going to be using the 26.9 inch extended barrel. We've got the mini reflex sight on there, the Forge Tac ultralight stock, which allows us to stray faster while we're aiming down sight. Once again, that 150 round magazine, because I hate having to reload this thing very often. And we've also got the Merc foregrip, which will help with that vertical recoil a bit, so we can control it at longer ranges just a little easier. But on top of that, it does help slightly with our hip fire spread, which is nice if somebody ends up getting close to us. Taking that into an example class setup, once again, we've got a Desert Eagle for our secondary. You can use whatever you'd like there, though. We've also got EOD, Hardline, and Shrapnel. And the reason we're using Shrapnel is we're also using Thermites, which is great in ground war for taking out tanks, because just two Thermites is all you need to disable an IAV. Then finally, for our tactical, we've got a Stun Grenade. And with that, that pretty much covers it for the PKM. As for my thoughts on this gun, I do think it is one of the better guns in the game. It is super underrated. Yes, it is a little bit on the slow side because it's an LMG, but you can really easily make up for those downsides by just using the right attachment combination. And when you do that, you get an excellent time to kill, a very accurate gun, and it's just a great all-arounder. So if you guys haven't really given the PKM a shot yet, I highly encourage you to do so, and you just might fall in love with it. But of course, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the PKM? Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes to this series, I will of course leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.